Good morning, happy Tuesday, and welcome back to my channel while we do a little bit of cooking today. It's the fall and you cannot turn around without getting smacked in the face by pumpkin spice. It started some 20 years ago with the pumpkin spice latte, and now we've got pumpkin spice cereal, we have pumpkin spice jello, pumpkin spice spam, even pumpkin spice dog treats, and pumpkin spice toothpaste. And to be completely honest with you, if you find that overwhelming, you might wanna turn this off right now because today we are pumpkin spicing barbecue. For the most part, pumpkin spice is associated with sweet dessert treats, but I actually think it's gonna translate really well to the grill. Most barbecue sauces and rubs are a combination of sweet and spicy. So what I need to do today is make sure that I strike the right balance while putting this together, and maybe we'll strike gold in finding a new fall treat. I'm gonna use chicken legs for this experiment because when I think of fall, I think of fair food. And when I think of fair food, I think of stuff that's on a stick and the chicken bone on the leg is actually the perfect vessel to create that on the stick experience. So first and foremost, we're gonna trim the meat away from the bone. In order to trim the meat, you can either use a good boning knife or kitchen shears. I'm going with the shears today, partially because my knife work is admittedly really poor. And as well, this is actually a pretty easy way to work with the chicken legs. You want to cut around the base of the thin bone piece and get right up to the bone. There's a lot of tough stringy tendons under the skin, so make sure that you get them all. Once that's done, you'll want to pull the skin clean off the chicken leg. We want a bone clean of meat or tendon since this is going to be the handle for our chicken lollipop. Also, don't forget to make sure to tuck the extra tendon pieces back inside the base of the lollipop. For visual reasons, having those hanging out isn't particularly appealing. Repeat this process for as many chicken legs as you're looking to serve. We've got our lollipops now. Of course, any good barbecue needs seasoning. Most spice rubs have a basic set of ingredients, usually starting with what we call SPG, salt, pepper, garlic. So let's build from that and try to create a nice balanced pumpkin spice rub. I'm starting with two tablespoons of brown sugar. We need something to complement the pumpkin spice and going full savory is gonna overpower it and likely make it unpalatable later on. Let's run equal parts salt and pepper with one tablespoon of each. Onion and garlic are barbecue staples and a teaspoon of each feels right. And now for the star of the show, the pumpkin spice. Because the cinnamon, clove and nutmeg are such powerful flavors, we don't wanna go heavy handed here. About a tablespoon should allow these flavors to shine. Finally, add a teaspoon of cornstarch. This is gonna be critical in keeping the skin from getting rubbery as it cooks. The cornstarch helps break down the skin, adheres it better to the chicken, and allows for a clean bite through. I've combined everything in an old taco spice shaker. You'll wanna mix it together with a few quick shakes. That looks blended nicely. Now let's season up that chicken. Don't go wild. You'll wanna hold some of that spice back for later. We're going to need it. Beautiful. Finally, let's add them to a cast iron pan and add some margarine. Butter works just as well. Don't go light. We want the legs to have a small butter bath. It actually works in tandem with the cornstarch, helping create that perfect bite through skin. All right, these chicken legs are looking pretty fantastic. They're trimmed down nicely, well seasoned covered with copious amounts of butter. So the next step is to take it over to the grill. I'm going to cook the legs over indirect heat. I preheated my smoker to 250 degrees. I've added some apple wood to the charcoal. And when it comes to chicken, you wanna go with really light fruit woods. Apple, peach, maple, cherry, that sort of thing. The reason for this is chicken is easily overpowered with heavier smokes. And especially since we're going for a sweet chicken today, you don't want a strong wood flavor on the meat. All right, let's go ahead and shut the lid and we'll check back on these in about 90 minutes time. So while those chicken lollipops cook down, it's time to get our sauce together. And if we really want to amp up the pumpkin flair, we got to make a pumpkin sauce. For our base, let's start with a full can of pumpkin puree. Really, I probably could have skipped this step. The pumpkin spice is what we're going to taste. We're not really going to taste the pumpkin, but I'm looking for authenticity. This should add some nice pumpkin color to the cook. Most traditional barbecue sauces use ketchup, and we're not gonna be any different today. About a cup of it is right. 
And because this is a sweet dish and we're in Canada, I'll add equal parts maple syrup. I'm going to throw in some brown sugar as well. All these sugars are going to bind nicely to the chicken at the back end of the cook, tack up and add a really nice sticky glaze to the end. However, as it is right now, it's a little too thick, so about a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar is going to help thin some of that out. If you're still finding it a bit thick, you could probably add another third of a cup if need be. For the savory hints, let's go with a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of black pepper, a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of chili powder, and about three tablespoons of pumpkin spice seasoning. Both the recipe I used for the rub and sauce is in the description below. So to bring this together, let's get this over medium stovetop heat. You should start to see some bubbling as you cook this down. Over the next 20 to 30 minutes, it will reduce into a nice thick barbecue sauce. All right, that's done and let's set it aside for later. It has been about 90 minutes since we put the chicken on and check that out. It's cooked through, the skin is binding to the meat. It doesn't need butter anymore, so let's get the chicken out of there and directly onto the grill. I'm gonna apply a fresh layer of seasoning as well because some of it came off in that butter and we really want that pumpkin spice to pop. I'm also gonna open the vents for a little more heat. I'm thinking around 300 to 350 degrees or so to really help start crisping up that skin. I'm gonna let this cook for another 30 minutes or so before we apply the sauce. It has been 30 minutes since we last looked in on these and these are looking really nice. We are ready to get sauced. So let's grab that sauce we cooked inside and using the bone as a stick, let's just dip the chicken right in and get it coated nicely all the way around. Yeah, look at those, they look like little candy apples. As we coat them, we'll get them back on the grill and give them about another 15 or 20 minutes or so to tack up. All right, it's been 20 minutes since I put these on and these are done. Look at the beautiful color on these. In terms of the actual cook, I don't think we could have done any better. So let's get these inside for the true test. Have we successfully pumpkin spiced a chicken? Okay, this chicken is done. I've let it rest for about 10 extra minutes to allow the sauce time to get sticky, really adhere to the meat. The pumpkin is really coming through strong. This whole room right now smells like I've been baking a pumpkin pie for the better part of the last few hours. It's fantastic. But does it pair well with chicken? I do promise 100% honest and transparent results, so let's give it a go. What I had envisioned when putting this together was thinking of sort of a candy apple from a state fair, and that's just about what I've got. You've got your little stick on the end here, a nice round ball shape. It's got the shiny new penny color, maybe not the bright red color that you would expect from a candy apple, but we're going the pumpkin route. So this darker mahogany color is actually perfect for the, the pumpkin spice motif. This is coming clean off the bone, it's, it's perfect. So it was a beautiful bite through skin. We achieved that with the cornstarch and the butter, which really helps to break down some of the more fibrous aspects of the skin. If you're having trouble with chewier chicken when you're doing long cooks on it, a little bit of cornstarch really does go a long way. This is shockingly outstanding. First and foremost, that applewood smoke always adds so much to any chicken cook. It's probably my favorite smoke to put on a chicken because it's so light. And before you write off the idea of a pumpkin spice chicken, I realize the idea of cinnamon and clove and nutmeg may seem a little bit strange, but think of sweeter chicken that you may have enjoyed in the past. Think of honey garlic. Think of really sweet barbecue sauces. This isn't so far off that it's completely obscure. Frankly, if you've got friends who aren't necessarily into the whole hot wing scene, but still love their chicken, this might not be a bad appetizer on football game days. These would even make a fun appetizer at a Halloween party. The pumpkin spice chicken lollipop. Huge winner, as far as I'm concerned. Give it a try, let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this fun little food experimentation we did today, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and comment down below to let me know. In the meantime, I will see you on Saturday when we drop our next video. If you need me, I'll just be over here eating chicken lollipops.